Here is what we know from biology. When sun goes down, moon serves as the main light source for animals. If a butterfly decides to travel from point A to point B, then it takes the direction to the moon and remembers the angle it makes with the line AB. As it travels, it maintains this angle, which guarantees it arrives at the right destination. This is possible due to its eye structure. A butterfly's eye is composed of tiny tubes, each responsible for vision in a certain direction. So if the light source is initially placed somewhere here, then this part of the eye will recognize it. If the butterfly moves, a different collection of tubes will perceive the light. So in order to maintain the same angle between the direction to the moon and its desired destination, the butterfly just needs to make sure that light hits its eyes at the same place throughout its journey. Now, the moon is really far away and the butterfly covers relatively small distances per unit time. So if we take the direction to the moon at point A and B, then it will be parallel. This is what guarantees that the butterfly does indeed travel in a straight line. But it may of course happen that the butterfly confuses the moon for some other light source, like a lamp. What will happen to the butterfly if it chooses the wrong lighthouse? So suppose that this is my light source and initially my butterfly is here and it wants to go to this point. So what it does initially, it takes the direction to the light, it takes the straight line direction towards its destination and it remembers its angle, this angle. So now it travels a bit towards point A but what happens at this point? Well, at this point, the direction towards the light source is different. These two lines are not parallel because the light source is quite close. But it wants to maintain this angle constant. So actually what it does is it takes angle phi from this direction and travels here. Well, at this point, the situation repeats and the light source is now coming from here. So again, it takes angle phi here, travels here. This is the new direction, takes angle phi and so on. So it diverges away from its destination, but it approaches the light source and it does so in a curved way. So let us do some rigorous mathematics to find out the equation of this curve. Assuming that our butterfly is smart enough to change its direction continuously, here is the defining property of the curve. At any point on our curve, the angle between the radial line joining the origin to this point and the tangent is constant. This rule in fact gives us a differential equation which will allow us to recover the equation of our curve. Let's derive this equation from a picture. I pick a general point xy on our curve. Here is a radial line, here is a tangent. The defining condition for our curve tells us that this angle phi is constant. We can observe that this angle defining the slope of the tangent is equal to the sum of phi and this angle alpha because it is equal to 180 minus the 2 all subtracted from 180 again. But by the very definition of a tangent we know that the slope is equal to tan of an angle and the slope of a tangent is dy dx so equal to tan of alpha plus phi. Wait, but what is alpha? Just look at this triangle and see that alpha is arctan of y over x. 
So we have this equation and using double angle formula for tan, we rewrite it as dy dx equals tan phi plus y over x all over 1 minus y over x times tan phi. Tan of phi is constant, which we will denote as a. An equation of this type is called homogeneous. In order to solve it, we write y as a product t times x, where t is some function which depends on x. By product rule, dy dx becomes x dt dx plus t. Substituting to our equation gives a plus t over 1 minus a t. After subtracting t from both sides, we recognize a separable equation. So we get the integrals. The rest is simple machinery, which I leave to you. In the end, you will see x squared and y squared, which really suggest you should introduce polar coordinates. Finally, you should yield this equation. r equals b times e to the 1 over a theta, where a and b are constants. This is an equation of a logarithmic curve. It is the same curve that appears in seashells and cyclones. Let us try and see how this curve ends. As I zoom in, we can see that the curve repeats itself endlessly. This is understandable if we remember the graph of e to the minus x. It decays to zero, but never reaches zero. So the radius in our polar equation will never be zero. And as theta takes all possible real values, our curve will perform an infinite amount of turns around the origin. Once again, if our butterfly starts its journey somewhere here, it will have to rotate around the center an infinite number of times before it reaches the origin. On a different side, you can calculate the length of our curve using this formula for polar curves, and you will see that the length is finite. An infinite number of turns, but a finite distance traveled. Isn't it beautiful?